Right, so we'll have a look at why steel corrodes away and flakes away into nothing. And aluminium seems to make it by unscathed. Yeah, let's get on with it. Steel suffers from this extreme degradation when it's left bare. Aluminium in the exact same conditions, even worse, will just stay completely untouched over time. Just continues to look the same. Aluminium seems to have this same patina and it doesn't get worse. But steel just seems to flake and crumble and corrode and it loses all strength. You can see in this part here, this is just a gutter, gutter in hanger. You can see how it's well it's about to fail and this is one that has failed just rusted away you can see how it's starting to delaminate then we have aluminium which this hasn't failed by corrosion this seems to be abused at some point but you can see this is it's been left outside it looks like it's been weathered quite hard because it's got rounded off edges but it's still got that nice patina it's not it's not degraded steel's oxide is bright red so it's really obvious then aluminium's oxide is a, isn't too dissimilar of a colour to the steel, so it's, it's a lot more obvious. As soon as steel starts to rust or oxidise, you can tell straight away, but aluminium, you don't notice the transition too much. It'll go from a very shiny tone to a slightly duller finish, but it's not excessively obvious. Very quickly, it goes to its duller shade. So after we've covered the base that they've got different coloured oxides, so this one's a lot less noticeable colour of an oxide, yet this is more noticeable. You could be like, that'll explain the appearance side, but it doesn't explain why steel would degrade over time and aluminium would still remain strong when it comes to weathering. So the next question is, is steel more reactive than aluminium? And if it's going to corrode more, surely it's more reactive. So we're going to look to the reactivity series to see if it is more reactive because that would explain away why it corrodes more. The reactivity series is a list of metals in the order of from most reactive to least reactive. So it would feature really clearly here if iron was more reactive, but it isn't. Aluminium's more reactive than iron. So out of this list of metals of from most reactive to least, aluminium's more reactive than iron is. So that rules that out. And then you're probably sat there wondering, well, what is it then? The main explanation that I heard was steel's oxide is porous, so it continues to let oxygen and moisture through, but aluminium's isn't porous, it doesn't. And that is true, but I just never like, it didn't really give you any insight. Why is it porous? It doesn't make any, like, i would not gained any information there. The reason why steel's oxide is porous and aluminium's isn't all comes down to the volumes of the oxide compared to the volumes of the base metal. So steel's oxide is over twice the volume than the base metal. So it, ha it needs to occupy more than twice the space than the steel does, causing it to expand. But aluminium, only needs to occupy roughly the same amount of space as the base metal itself. This results in a layer for aluminium like this. You can see that we've got the aluminium and we've got the oxide layer and the oxide layer pretty much occupies exactly the same space as the aluminium did. So this leaves a coherent oxide layer on top and this acts as a barrier for the aluminium. So it stops oxidization from continuing to happen. This is called passivation. Basically it's a protective layer that stops the aluminium from continuing to oxidize. And this can all happen because aluminium's oxide layer is about the same size as aluminium so it doesn't displace or crack. On the other hand, steel's oxide layer is over twice the size of the base steel. So as the oxide layer is growing, the huge stress is formed because it's just there's more oxide there than there is space. So it causes it to crack and flake off. These cracks leave the bare face of the carbon steel open to the air and open to the elements, open to moisture. And this allows the corrosion to continue layer by layer and doesn't provide much, if any, protection at all to the steel underneath. And, and that, you can classify oxide layers compared to the base metal with the Pilling and Bedworth ratio. The, this ratio just is the ratio of the oxide's volume compared to the base metal's volume. There is, an, there is actually another type. So the oxide layer can be smaller than the base metal. And this happens in magnesium. So magnesium's oxide layer isn't protective either. It's just that magnesium's is kind of the opposite problem 
of what carbon steel has and its oxide layer is smaller so instead of it buckling and cracking it shrinks and cracks under tension yeah so we we got ways of making a barrier the same as aluminium that's known as paint but effectively what you want to do to stop your steel from corroding is provide a barrier that stops moisture and oxygen gaining access to the base steel Thanks for watching. Battery ran out at the end. Felt like there was a lack of closure, but I feel like you heard what you needed to hear, so I won't refilm it. Leave comments if you will. I won't ask you to like it because you don't have to like it, but give me feedback. Say what you liked and didn't like. Thank you. See ya.